competitiveness in the community, in their vegetation community. Whereas smaller unapparent plants are the ones that are harder for herbivores to locate, have lower visibility, they have the lower, lower palatability, and they also unfortunately have the lower dispersal rate and um, the resource competitive, competitiveness is compromised. Um, so with, the, with the, these two theoretical frameworks in mind, I made sure that I I made sure that the, I I would um, study the coast, the significance of this. Make sure that the significance of studying insect herbivory would be um, would be a paramount objective in my study. So Santa Clara County, as I said, provides elevational and ecological traits that make it uh, lend itself to elevational frameworks and then also the we have coastline oaks that cover those elevational um, characteristics with these conditions they make a prime location for my type of investigation and again with with understanding oak lepidopteran interactions there there may be um, tools or management um, methods that can be gleaned from studying them Research and researchers and uh, managers in San, Santa Clara County may benefit from understanding the tools that, that monitor uh, the impacts that we spoke of in previous slides, including phenological disruption, uh, phenological desynchronization, I'm sorry, and then also the mismatches between um, different communities in, in, within vegetation and um, insect herbivores. So I just move on to I'll move on to the my research questions and hypotheses. So again, with my research questions and hypotheses, I uh, I focused on the predictions of resource availability of those two frameworks that I described. So again, I wanted to see if this is really true. Do I find this in in Mount Hamilton? Will I find an elevational difference between their temperatures? Will I find an ele elevational difference in their insect herbivore rates, in their, in their rates of um, leaf area loss? Will there actually be any um, difference in the chemical defenses? Will this hold up? Will it be valid in my um, study area? Same goes for the, the, um, the other hypothesis, hypothesis, plant size appearance hypothesis. Is there really a difference between, uh, with elevationally, um, with size? Is it, does it really influence the plant uh, defense chemicals, and does it really, um, does it really influence the uh, characteristics that were found in Mount Hamilton? So I, I took the the DBH as well as the height as the main the main metrics for plant size. Going back, again, elevation and temperatures association with those of herb um, herbivory rates were studied, and also, obviously, the implications of my study and the implications of oak woodland management were a key, um, key aspect of the research questions and hypothesis. I wanted to know, really, what to what extent are abiotic <coughs> factors, um, as, as such as mean annual temperature, and elevational insect herbivory, what does this really mean for the implications uh, for oak woodland management? So on to my methods. Um, I studied from September to December, um, and then I also did another period of study from March to, I should actually to say May, but um, March to May. And uh, within my plot uh, design and study area, I focused again on the Mount Hamilton range. The, and the sites that I focused on are listed there. Um, Lick Observatory, Grant uh, Ranch County Park, and Blue Oak Ranch Reserve, and Pinata de los Oscos. Uh, so the, uh, with Lick Observ Observatory, that it sits on top uh, Mount, Hamilton, Mount Hamilton, and the Grant, Grant County Blue Oak, they represented the mid-elevation uh, levels, the intervals that are mid-elevation, 
And then also the Cañada de los Osos was this little southern part and sits near Gilroy and, oops, sorry, sits near Gilroy and it was a sample site that represented the lowest elevation point. So all of these sites were um, sampled at 100 meter intervals in order to provide a gradient of temperature and um, again mimic those climate change uh, conditions that are assumed in an elevational framework. Um, within each uh, sampling site, there was a variety of grasslands, mixed oak woodlands, um, chaparral, as well as riparian vegetation. So, with these uh, with these sites, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about why I cho chose them. I've all, I've explained already what the why I was so drawn to. Santa Clara County, the elevational characteristics, but specifically Mount Hamilton has an elevational temperature gradient of approximately four uh, degrees uh, Celsius. And this is, again, according to research, a suitable proxy. Um, and it also reflects the climate, uh, climate change scenarios that are predicted for Santa Clara County. The average in, um, annual temperature in lower elevations in Mount Hamilton are 33 degrees uh, Celsius, while high, high average, um, high elevation averages are 25 degrees Celsius. So that temperature difference again was very important for me for the elevational um, framework. And then also table three right here, or this table, um, also lists the 30-year annual average um, for predicted for uh, the well, it has the historic um, and averages as well as what is projected in the 30-year. Um, in 30 years or by the end, for th sorry. the projections are there and av the average um, will reflect the conditions at the end of the century. Okay. So, and this slide represents the target specimens of my study. So the live oak, uh, coast live oak and nymphalidae lar larva were the focus of of um, the study, and the right-hand image focuses on or highlights the feeding patterns or marginal feeding patterns that I did look for in each of the herbivory um, surveys. And this is just a picture of the type of close, um, the type of oak that I I sampled at each elevational point. Um, the target individuals were mature coastline oaks and saplings at at least 1.2 meters in height, and a total of 502 individual specimens were sampled over the different elevations at the various sites. The next slide will show you the various sites and their corresponding corresponding mean temperature. Okay, <laughs> so uh, the, before that, the data collection methods that I used for um, within these sites are um, again the herbivory studies, the phenolic laboratory analysis, as well as vegetation community surveys. So within each of the herbivory stu studies, I studied each uh, I studied branches of um, coast live oaks of each specimen, and I looked for the average um, leaf percent area that was removed, meaning what was removed by the, the larva, and then also um, the feeding type, and um, also the d discrete feeding uh, damage, the damage marks per leaf. Now, um, since I was also concerned about the chemical defense levels, and to see if there's actually a difference uh, according to size or according to elevation, I wanted to test the phenolic compound com uh, concentration. And phenolics are a, a group of uh, chemical defenses um, within oaks that are used to deter uh, insect herbivores. So that was just sent out to a lab and they, they um, extracted or tested for the concentration of camphorol quercetin uh, and then also the um, for uh, logic and get acid. So uh, for vegetation community surveys, I took the historic data of the of temperature as um, from each site because there were weather stations um, within each of my sites and I also um, recorded the diameter of rest height 
um, and, all, and canopy cover and other characteristics of each of these specimens. All right. So here is what I was trying to say. So a total of 502 um, oak specimens uh, were sampled at different elevation sites. And as I said before, Cañada de los Osos was the, um, the lowest represented, the lowest elevation. And it, it turns out that the mean temperature was 14.58. And then if you go to the highest elevation, we have Lick Observatory at um, 1,050 um, meter interval, or um, at elevation. And um, the mean temperature was 7.23. So again, we see that difference, and it does um, simulate the proxy, the proxy that elevational um, studies require. And on to the results. So with all of that, um, what did I find? Did I, did I um, find the actual difference elevation in terms of elevation, and did I, act, did I find any difference in terms of size? So with the mean annual temperature, uh, there was a strong and inverse correlation to, to elevation. And I'll show you the line graph that shows that. I mean, you already saw it in the tabulation of, the, of those statistics, but um, you did see that at 300, the lower elevations, you have the highest, um, the highest recorded annual temperatures, and then at the um, higher elevations, you have the lowest. So again, that correlation demonstrates the trend expected in resource availability hypothesis. So, how about in terms of the leaf area loss, or how much uh, leaf uh, leaf area was was um, fed or taken from from insect Lepidoptera um, larvae? So there was a moderate relationship between leaf area removed and um, elevation. We find differences between uh, group A and B. So this this shows. So this, group A shows that the, the herbivory was lower and that there was much higher, um, much higher herbivory on higher elevations. This is actually con contrast from the expected trend. And I'll, I'll talk more about that in the discussion. So group A again shows that individual trees at lower elevations, 350 to 550 meter um, elevations and the higher temperature um, as well, so that you, have, you see the higher temperature uh, recorded over there. And then the um, herbivory in group A again shows the higher temperatures. Um, oh, sorry. This is, this is wrong. The lower it should be, oh yeah, the lower temperatures and then the higher, um, the higher elevations. So there, but there was still, um, there was still a weak, uh, a moderate relationship between them. So not exactly um, a strong uh, correlation. And then in terms of chemical defense, uh, the, there was no uh, considerable uh, phenolic compound concentration relationship per elevation, except for quercetine, which was still um, not exactly what the expected trend would be according to resource about the availability. So here you see a spike in the middle with uh, 550 to 750. Um, the line graph shows that there's significantly higher quercetin concentrations in in those um, in those in 650 in the 650 um, meter interval, and then there's also lower concentrations at the uh, 450 and 950 elevation. Now, if we go back to the plant size apparency um, hypothesis and we see what trends uh, were observed as opposed to what was expected, the individual tree DBH um, and the herbivory rates were strongly correlated, whereas the tree height was not really much of an indicator. It was positive, positively correlated, but it was a weak relationship. I'll show those graphs just so you can So this shows that there was quite a strong um, trend, the individual DBH versus the leaf area removed. And then 
also with um, the tree height. Uh, again, as I said, it was a, there was a part of positive correlation. It did attract more herbivores, but it was a weak relationship. So we have plant height on the x-axis, and then leaf area removed on the y. And again, with the chemical defense trends, there was no relationship that was that um, that was influenced by either DBH or plant height. Okay. So what does this mean? What do what do what does this lead or imply for uh, for woodland management uh, for future studies? It shows us that elevation and temperature are strongly associated. It means that elevational frameworks may be a workable tool for investigating plant herbivore studies, for investigating how those, those vegetation and insect communities um, can be studied so that we know what the impacts are on the upper trophic levels. Um, we also um, can, can, it also confirms that past uh, studies that have, that have used these elevational frameworks may be an, an additional guide for um, finding perhaps better frameworks or nuanced frameworks of elevational studies that are more pertain to uh, Santa Clara County's conditions. And with that, there is a potential that <coughs> these surveys could be use useful for restoration planning, for managing local extinct extinctions, for recolonizations, and that again draws us back to that phenological synchronization and mismatch communities that I, I talked about before. Um, knowing more about plant herbivore, herbivore um, relationships can also help us to, to select the, the right areas to preserve. Uh, oak woodlands are a shrinking uh, type of ecosystem. We do need to make sure that they're preserved, but it's much better to strategically choose um, locations that will give us the best uh, return for, for um, oak woodland preservation. Um, so it's also, it may be useful for managing species in current and future climate change scenarios, and that's, again, what I've been pointing to um, throughout the presentation. So, now, I just want to go back to those, those trends that we did not see and what, we, what was observed as opposed to what was um, expected. So contrary, like I said, contrary to the RAH, or resource availability hypothesis, we did not see the, um, the herbivory greater at um, the lower, lower um, elevations. There are actually other um, studies that confirm this. They've seen that there's herbivory patterns that are variable. They opposed, actually, the hypothesis. And they, they even um, show that there, there may, have, may be other characteristics that we should study. So there's, there's one study that shows um, multiple, of, like a study of 24 elevation gradients simultaneously with forest, or, uh, multiple species of forest herbivores. And even that one with, with its um, dura duration and its scale of study um, did not show a trend, a solid trend. It showed inconsistent herbivory rates. And then another study showed that they were actually perhaps um, dependent on leaf habit or the, the growth form. Perhaps it's, it's about what um, characteristic of softwood and hardwood um, growth the, the plant um, may have. So in, in terms of the PSAH, um, the plant size apparency hypothesis, we did have a positive correlation. We did see that the DBH um, indicated more herbivory. Now, the plant height was less of an indicator. And there's findings in other studies that show that um, that size were, was also indicative of higher herbivory rates. And, and also they, they show um, perhaps uh, conclusions or perhaps um, suggestions as to why that may happen. So there's one study that shows that uh, larger plants uh, increase the insect colonization. That may be because it provides more biomass for um, insect refuge and also protection from predation. And it also um, lowers the, 
uh, competition because of the the, fo uh, the form of foliage, the growth, hab growth habit, as well as the size. Okay, and um, the, another study showed that plant size actually increased the um, again the visual and chemical conspicuousness. So again, it was directly um, confirming the elevation uh, the 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 hypotheses um, patterns that they predicted. That does not mean that I would say or recommend fully any of these uh, theoretical frameworks. I would, say, I would caution and say that there are improvements that are needed to my type of study. Um, you need to Going forward, managers who want, want to pursue the elevational uh, framework should create a plot design and study duration that examines multiple oak lepidopteran relationships simultaneously across uh, several elevation gradients. That would create a more um, substantial, uh, robust baseline of data. And then it, with more time, two, two years of longitudinal study, over two or more years, that can give you more of a solid trends that you can base your uh, recommendations on. Now, I would also um, say that the improvement of plant defense analysis is needed. I may not have had uh, results because my, my uh, field surveys were um, limited. In other studies that have multiple sciences, a lot of huge budget, um, there are actually uh, more sites, not only that, there's corresponding garden experiments and um, field field experiments where you can have standing herbivory um, and standing herbivory and plant defense observations on both types of sites. So the use of elevational frameworks, again, they may, they may um, be used to test associations and assist in management of oaks, um, but there is a need to test and uh, develop perhaps more um, more hypotheses that lend itself to Santa Clara County's uh, distinct ecological characteristics, and from there, that may that may actually lead to more um, finer strategies of management within the systems. And that's about it. That's all I have for you. Um, <laughs> I just want to say thank you for your patience. And all that. Um, yeah, if you have this, at this point. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me. I'll try my best to answer. But yeah. And this is our um, sort of protocol a little bit. We have the um, the committee members who can ask questions first. And first of all, I, I just want to thank you very much for the great um, presentation. Really wonderful. And also your um, your focus on theory and um, looking at comparing different theories. I think that's nice aspect of this work. Um, do we have questions about uh, the first? <laughs> okay, so um, a couple of things. One is um, when you talk about improvement of the approval of these theoretical frameworks. Um, do you have an idea what that would look like for Santa Clara County if you were tailoring a project to Santa Clara County? itself? Do you have ideas yeah. about what that might look like? I feel like, so if you looked at my map, there was such a huge gap. Mm -hmm. And there were so many areas that I couldn't, I didn't have permits 